into the final round. Hati Chenyon and T. And T. Oh, getting closer there. Pero kanina, if you compare it to the first four rounds, the apat lang or anim yung lamang na suntok. Litong si Jerwin ang kaha sa lumayuna ng konte here in the latter rounds. There are still a bunch of close rounds. Siguro tat dalawa tatlo sa mga binigay natin kay Jerwin could still swing the other way, but I think he is ahead in this matchup. Ito po as a reminder lang ang official Puerto Rico scorecard nito. Ito yung subjective call ni Carlo Pumito, but it is close to almost correct, I would assume. But you know, there are two other, three other judges, you know, and interesting and intriguing sometimes about boxing. At iba-ibang angulo yung kanilang nakikita. Uh -huh. They are in different spots in the ring para makita talaga, para ma-judge ng husto kung sino ang lamang dito sa laban. Kasi baka tumama ng, sa isang angulo, sa kabilang angulo, baka hindi ka din. Or hataw ng miss na isa, pero tama ang pala sa isang judge, ano? Kulit, kulit, yan, kulit At yan, at atlo yan. of puffiness dito sa kanang mata nitong si Jerwin ng Cajas might have been because of the headbutt oh, okay. in round number 11 at least hindi pa sumisiri na hindi na magkukuto okay. si Santiago moving around the ring when he should be pressing the action It's either you settle for a points victory or you go for broke at this stage of the matchup. Kung tingin mo, kailangan mo talaga magpakilala. Left hand. Ooh. Tomira off the break si Santiago Barrios. Some giga punches all the round at the TNT. Both fighters exchanging serious leather there. Both want to leave a good impression. And Gahas, I think, with the more authoritative punches, the more decisive. Panakanaka kasi yung mga sugod nitong si Santiago. He was very effective when he was attacking in the middle rounds. But he allowed Jerwin Angkahas to dictate the distance dito sa laban na to. And because may bentahe nga in both height and reach itong si Jerwin, he might be up ahead. Ganda ng body punch ng mga sugod sa ato. Bilis na kami na going to the ribs area. You know what they're asking for. <laughs> so, they're asking for a flourish dito sa dulo ng ating laban. I don't think it's gonna happen. Santiago, confident. Actually, this is not just to say that he probably won in his mind. But this is more... I if that <laughs> but again, kumpiansa siya. He thinks that he did enough to maybe win some of the closer rounds. Yeah, yeah that's, this should be interesting. And the Philippine flag being waved there in the uh, ring. Let's listen in. Uh, Another draw para dito kay Santiago Seb. Scorecards all over the place. One judge had it 116-112 para dito kay Ancajas. The other had it a draw. The other scored the fight for Santiago. For Santiago. And it is officially a draw. So the championship is retained by Ancajas. Split draw. And disappointed, see, you can see Jerwin. I'm taking the point of view of Jerwin. Uh, he felt that uh, he probably won the fight. And here are some uh, Kababayans who felt at the same way too. But that's boxing. That's how the cookie crumbles into Posa fight game. And Jerwin, you, you can sense he's 
disappointment, no? I'm sure everyone's disappointed. Even Santiago is disappointed kasi kala niya nakuha na niya yung panalo, no? To be able to get one scorecard against Jerwin and Cajas was already, you know, an achievement para sa kanya. He thought he was right there. Siguro kinulang lang no dulo. Na to? Pangatlo, no? Itong si Santiago. Santiago has a lot of draws. It will be his fifth. Fifth draw. Yep. Parang sabi niya, Ano namang buhay ito? Parang sinusundan siya talaga, no? Every time, again, as we said, every time he takes a step up in opposition, eh palaging draw yung nagiging resulta ng laban. Ito, sabi niya, I gave a good account of myself. That's all I can do. I've uh, earned my keep for today. Uh, we hope we can meet again. I'm sure gusto niya makalaban ulit ito si Ancas. And I hope uh, the fight uh, promoters will consider a, another battle uh, between the two. Gentlemen, this is for the IBF Junior Bantamweight World Championship. You received your instructions in the dress room. Remind me to protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Here and OK is good. Here and OK is good. Touch gloves. Jerwin and Cajas is coming off of a draw. It was back in September at Oakland. Had a 12-round draw against Alejandro Santiago. It was an action-packed fight. You guys Each guy had to really TV, dig in right? hard during those 12 rounds. Had some swelling over his right eye. He's talked a lot about the change in training. Stressed the difference of being on a Marine base back home. And let's see if we see a change compared to what he's looked like in his most recent fights. Well, it's going to be very important for Ancajas to get respect from Funai early. Funai coming off seven straight wins. Six wins by KO. So he's going to come in confident. He's going to come and attack and Cajas from the opening bell. Dre, he wasn't bashful about saying what his strategy would be through throughout the night. He said, hey, if I have to throw ten punches just to land one big right hand, I will. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree, Joe. And I was just getting ready to say that you took the words right out of my mouth. In our fighter meeting, very confident, very poised. We talked about the crowd, maybe being against him. Uh, there's a large Filipino contingency here in the Bay Area. He said, that's okay. If they if they boo me, I love it. It's not a big problem. Uh, I'm coming straight to him. I, I do not think that Ancajas likes it inside, and we're going to find the fight inside early. So we'll see if he if he sticks to his word. Ancajas just off the mark a little bit with the left hand. But, you know, both guys right now trying to figure out range before they take risks. Figure out range, punching power, and just trying to get in position to be able to land their shots. And Cajas with a right hook, southpaw right hook for Cajas comes back with it. And Cajas can throw to the body, he can rip rights and lefts to the body when he wants to, but he wants it mid-range and, and outside. That's when he's at his best in my opinion. And Cajas right there missing with the big looping left hand, he's going for the home run already. But the downside to Ancajas being outside is he doesn't move his head. He doesn't really show any different wrinkles in his defensive game. He stands straight up. He's very traditional in, in his stance and the way his, his offensive approach is. And therefore, he can get hit with straight slot shots like we just saw him get hit with. Well, a lot of times, Ancajas come right back to the middle, Dre. So he'll throw a punch and he come right back to the middle instead of stepping around and getting on the angle to be able to get away from the punches of Funai. See, just like that, he stepped out a little bit. Dropped his hands and Funai threw a right hand right down the middle and landed right on the forehead of Ancajas. And Funai can fight on the outside as well, but like he told us in the fighter meeting, he wants to take this in close. Doesn't feel like Ancajas likes a fighter to be close to him. He feels like Ancajas gets very uncomfortable. U.S. debut for Yuichi Funai. There's a left hand from the titleist. And of round number one, IBF Junior Bantamweight title. Time! Did that right hand right at the bell land? 
Top Rank Boxing on ESPN is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Top Rank Boxing here in Stockton, California. Why Stockton? Because they have a 19-year-old undefeated sensation who has packed the Stockton Arena on a fight card bookend by world title fights. Soon enough, we will be seeing Gabe Flores, who's 12-0 right now, and this place will be on fire when he makes his ring walk. But what a way and what a treat to have Flores on national TV when you get title fights surrounding him. Here we are, round number two of our junior bantamweight IBF World Championship. Nice shots already at the gate from Mkahas. You know, really finding a mark now. Headbutt the there. Head. But, you know, when the Cajas goes down to the body first, it sets up things up top. You know, and Cajas is kind of abandoning his jab. Normally I see in Cajas shoot this sharp, stiff jab. You know, really heavy on the front foot. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of that tonight, Dre. Yeah, Cajas is trying to take advantage of the over-aggression of Funai with that check right hook that we saw him land several times in the first round. It's a natural punch for and Cajas. And he's landed it. Mm -hmm. several times and he's also starting to bring that straight left back behind him. Yeah, there he goes with the lead left that time as he was wide swinging to the outside but much success with that right hook in round number one. Yeah Tess he got to be careful swinging wide like that I saw that coming you know Funai all he has to do is throw the right hand straight down the middle and it's gonna catch in Cajas and probably drop him. The kind of punches that um, Kajas has landed so far, you'll say, hey, they're not that hard. They're just, you know, stinging type shots. But let the fight progress. Those same shots in round five, six, and seven could drop or knock the opponent out if they land right. Funai was just probing to the body that time after, or excuse me, and Kajas after Funai came forward with the right hand. Funai starting to find his mark with the right hand. Every now and then, the Kajas would sit still just for a moment and don't do anything. And Funai just shoot the right hand right down the middle and catch on Kajas with it. As he should with that situation. There's a straight left that split the guard from Nkahas. And to that combination also placed a right hand to the body. That's the thing about Nkahas. Nkahas can actually be, he's a great counter puncher. So he's in range, he can get out of range, move his head, and then come back with counters. He's quick enough and has good position to be able to do so. And Dre, you know, we talk about southpaws all the time. They always look for the, the, the backhand, you know, and Cajas is a natural right-hander, mm -hmm. and he's converted to southpaw, so it's a strong hand. So the, the right hook is his power punch. That's why we see him landing it the way that he has, uh, and, and it seems effortless for him. And he also has a great jab, too, Ten seconds. to, you know, make the point that you just made. Good Both guys left. coming in, and a left hand scores well from Cajas. End of two. Time! Back here in Stockton, getting a look at the guy who was voted the 2017 Athlete of the Year in the Philippines. That's when Jerwin and Cajas was able to break through, claim his world championship, and string together impressive wins here round number three, trying to defend his title against you. Ichi Funai. Guys, in the last round, we saw the effectiveness of that right hook, left hand combination. Well, again, a natural punch for Ancajas, but he really didn't want to land the right hook on the, in that sequence. He really wanted the straight left. Here we see just a blinding short right hook, and then the straight left comes right down the pipe and hits Funai right on the chin. And you see Funai, how he reacted to that right hook. He tried to get out of range and then come back to land his own right hand, but Ancajas was just a little bit quicker with his left hand and on the mark. And Funai keeps getting hit with those kind of shots because he's standing still and he's standing right in the range of Ancajas. Well, Saw CompuBox tallying up a 36 to 19 connect advantage for the world champion, Jerwin and Cajas. Bernardo Asuna, good evening to you. What are they saying in his corner? Joven Jimenez is not very happy with the defense of Jerwin. He says, I like his offense. He's landing the right hook, but he's got to use his jab more. And as you see right away, Funai right now is stepping up the tempo, pushing the pace. He's trying to take those angles away from Jerwin and Cajas by pressing on the gas tank. He closed the, the gas gap. pedal. He, he closed the gap moments ago, but yeah. in doing so, he also ate a right uppercut. He's okay with that. He's okay with taking those punches. He's trying to just close the gap 
on Encajas and pressure him. That's one way of beating the southpaw. You pressure him. You pin him against the ropes. You outwork him. You take those angles away from him. And don't allow him to extend with that backhand. Considerable infighting here from Funai. This is where Funai wants to be. And I, and I disagree, Tim, oh, because out, out. Funai can't, al can't allow himself to be hit with those kind of shots from Ancajas because Ancajas is very tricky. He's very crafty. And I'm telling you, he's lining Funai up for that straight left and that right hook. Well, athletically, he's not going to be able to compete with a guy like Ancajas. So he's, he's stepping inside, and he knows that. On the outside, he's, he's not quick enough. So I need to close the gap, and I need to get this guy comfortable so I can land my hard shot that power right hand that Funai has so Funai needs to be inside in mid-range I agree with that but I don't agree with the fact that he needs to sit there and take shots no not take shots great but he, you know he got to get him comfortable somehow to be able to sit there and be comfortable so that way he can line him up for the right hand guys I tell you these guys inside this is an attractive third round if you watch some of the little angles on the inside digging to the body some of these uppercuts this has been an entertaining third round here at this distance just wrapping around even that left hand by Funai, then wrapping around the elbow with the right hand to the body by Ankahas. This is good stuff. Yes, it, it is. is. High-level stuff Ten right seconds. here. Championship-level stuff. We see a lot of will, but we see a lot of skill, like you said, Tess. Good combination from Ankahas, and then Funai comes right back. Look at that trade to end the third. The crowd reacting as they get a glimpse of Gabriel Flores. He is coming up next. He is the 19-year-old sensation. Just turned 19 this week. Folks, he was graduating from high school, getting his diploma in this arena a year ago. Now he's fighting on national TV. He is a Stockton homegrown product. He's coming up after our first of two world title fights here tonight. Well, another way of beating the southpaw is landing the right hand. The reason for the landing right hand is because the southpaw, the head lies on the side where the right hand is, right in the line of fire. And Funai has to continue. Oh, he's hurt. He's hurt from that right hook. Look at Kahas. Left hand comes in, right to the body, right hook. He's got the challenger in trouble here early in round four. And Kahas looking as good as he had recently. Here he comes, the champ on the attack. Can the Japanese challenger Funai hold up? Trying to trade with Ankahas. Wide sweeping right hand that time as Funai now settles down and tries to wrap around the left hand to the body right, himself. Stop, stop. Good action to open up this fourth round. A lot of success from Ankahas with that short right hook. Yeah, he's catching him as he's coming in. And there's a left hand that splits the guard. He's hurt, Tess. Very hurt. That straight left hurt. Funai very, very much. And, and Dre, I haven't seen Funai tie up not once. He's just putting it all on That's the line. not his game. He doesn't really know how to tie up. Yeah. He gets hurt and he wants to fight harder, which is going to be a mistake because he's getting lined up oh. by every shot that Ankahas throws right now. And Man. now Ankahas is going oh. to the body, which is not a good sign. How did he stand up to that? Right hand to the body again. Missed the belt line that time. Sweeping with the right hand one more time. There's still over a minute to go here for Funai. And Kaha showing that championship mentality, going down to the body, knowing that he needs to bring that defense down and keep draining this, this fighter, Funai, so he can land something hard over the top, Dre. And Kaha is lining up that right hook. He just missed it right there. Some blood coming from the nose of Funai. Kaha's looking for the, the kill shot right here. Looking to land the overhand left. Left hand landed flush again. That's the shot that right hook right again as blood flew from the face of Funai. See that left straight and another one. Yeah. That straight left right there, Tess, is just a blinding shot. That's a waste shot. You see how he's leaning to the side right there? Yes. And Kaha's wants the right hook. That's it. How in the world has Yuichi Funai stood up to all of this? He has not been knocked down in this brutalizing fourth round. Ten seconds. It's called heart test. That's what it is. Yeah, heart. but they need to look to stop this because this kid's taking a lot of punishment right now. Ooh, good oh, underneath with the left hand to the body. Just a cap. An overly impressive fourth round for the world champ. Yeah.
空振りさせることはな疲れてくるから相手な空振りさせて空振りさせてさあ辛抱辛抱
you know, he hasn't really have, he don't have an identity yet. He don't even have a blueprint on what makes him tick. He's still trying to figure that out. And that's the problem I have being a world champion and having seven title defenses, Dream. Yeah, I, I like the adjustment I Kai has made uh, by, you know, less is more. Getting a lot of people away, keeping a simple team, the people that were there from the beginning, and just hitting reset. Yeah. And it looked like it served them well in this fight so yeah. far. And you guys called exactly the fact that Ankaz sort of punts himself out there in round number four. Took round five off, but Joven Jimenez said this round, I want him to work behind the jab and start pressuring. But Funai is strong. And Bernardo, it's justified when you look at the CompuBox numbers in that fourth round. He threw 88 power punches. 88 alone in that fourth round. It's got, got to be a little discouraging for Ankaz to have that kind of round and still look up a round and a half later and Funai is still looking you in the yes, face. Yes, it's an impressive game guy, isn't he, the challenger? Well, if you're digging him down to the body, you're going to take some of that steam away, but, you know, you got the challenger here, Funai, that's gaining confidence moving forward. And yet he's eating hooks and left hands. Three straight, four straight left hands. And another one from the champ. And another split in the guard. Can't get out of the way of these straight left hands. See, but don't back off, Encajas. Don't back off. Keep coming. You know, change the rhythm. Change the pace. Throw three, four, five, six punch combinations. You got your man hurt? I think Encajas knows exactly what he's doing. He's inflicting punishment. He's stepping back, allowing the punishment to kind of soak in a little bit. And then he's inflicting more punishment. Now the right hook comes back into play. Nice shot from Encajas. Step back. Half a step back. And dropped straight left hand short. Oh, got hit with a short little uppercut up the middle from but, Funai. Yeah, I've said it several times. I'm not trying to overstate the point and take away from a great fight, but they really have to keep an eye on Funai. Mm -hmm. It's not the concussive shots all the time. It's the sub-concussive shots. Yeah. This kid is taking a lot of punishment, and, he, and he's still game, so they have to save him from himself. Dre, these are the kind of fights where I worry about a fighter's health. When you're standing up to everything, when you haven't been knocked down, when you're this game showing this much heart the way Funai is. Yes. Face of Yuichi Funai is. You see the referee Edward Fayantes take a look at him. Ringside Time. position is right up on the apron again. Dr. Gary Furness is leading the crew here for the California Commission. Never took a peek at him. Okay, that's it. That's it. And I think. That is the right move. This kid is That's tough. It. This kid will take all night long. But we started to get the feeling sitting here ringside about halfway through the last round that it had reached that point. I think that is in the absolute best interest of the fighter. Yes, it was. And it, it's absolutely justified. Absolutely. There's no need to boo. Excellent call yes. by the doctor. We don't always see those kind of calls. Tremendous job. Great performance from Ankahas and a game effort from Funai. That was an impressive, steady output from Sherwin in Kahas in a title defense. He's back. He's back. That's what I want to see. That dog. You know, punching power, speed, accuracy, boxing ability. And Kahas did it all tonight. We well, really started to see guys, especially in the last two rounds. There was that one moment where I was calling straight left hand after straight yeah. left hand in the blow by blow. And it was there all night long. Let's take a look at the success that the champ had with the left hand. Yep, all straight left hands. He stepped back, straight left hand. Caught him right in between the shot, straight left hand. As Funai would move back and pull back and try to get in range. And Kahas would come straight down the middle with a straight left hand. He could not miss this shot all night long. Funai couldn't just get, he couldn't get out the way. Uh, Funai don't move his head. His defense is his feet. He gets out of range and then gets back in the range. Get out of range and gets back in the range. He needs to work on his defense if he wants to continue boxing. Well, let's make it official. For that, we go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one second in round number seven. Our referee in charge, Edward Coyantes, stops the contest upon advice of the ringside physician. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. And still, the IBF.
half, Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World, Jerwin Pretty Boy Onkaha. Exactly how he wanted the night to go. Jerwin Onkaha's 31st win of his career. Another title defense and the champion. Introducing to you first the challenger fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He's wearing black and gold and weighed in at 114 and a half pounds. And now Sina Azul, El Retador. Vestido de negro con dorado. Su peso es 114 libras y media. His record, 31 wins, 2 defeats, 8 wins by knockout. Su record. 31 victorias, 2 derrotas con 8 victorias por la vía del knockout. De Santiago de Chile, presentando Miguel Aguja González. His opponent across the ring, the defending champion, fighting in the corner. He is representing Survivor Game, Banana Guy and Amides. He's wearing very good white and weighed in at 115 pounds. And Asina Roja, El Campeon, vestido de rojo con blanco, su peso es 115 libras. His record, 31 wins, just one defeat. Two draws, 21 wins come by way of knockout. Su record, 31 victorias, una derrota, dos empates, con 21 victorias por la vía del knockout. Tonight, in his eighth world title defense, here is the reigning and defending IBF Junior Pantaleon Champion of the World, Dan Magallanes. Kaviti Philippines, Sherwin, Pretty Boy, on The bill. A lot of nerves on that young man right now. Leonardo and Cajas has fought everywhere. He's fought in China, US, Australia, North Ireland. I mean, this man has no problem fighting you in your home country, wherever you're from, your hometown, it doesn't matter. Have ring, will travel. That's uh, the Navy man's, you know, his, his theme. I mean, this guy is not afraid to go anywhere. No. As you mentioned, he's an international traveler. He just received a promotion to senior chief petty officer in the Philippines Navy Reserves on August 19th. So even though... He couldn't fight because of visa issues of his opponent. He still kept busy, and right. that boot camp mentality is what you can see the great shape he's in. That's right. Now, what's the pitfall of, you know, preparing? It was already a long camp that he had for November 2nd. I yeah. remember talking about that. And then next thing you know, it's postponed a whole month. What's that like, Tim? It's just maintenance, honestly. Um, you're supposed to fight, and you just got to go back, get a little rest, then get back in the gym. You know, and then just try to peak again at the, you know, peak at the, at the right time again. So, you know, his trainer is in charge of that. And he's got a trainer who he's been with uh, forever, Joven Jimenez, since his fourth pro bout in 2010. And as well for his last few fights, he's got a conditioning coach as well as a nutritionist. And you got to have that. The last couple times. He's looked a lot better because there was a point where we saw him come into one of our fighter meetings. And yeah, he was done I mean you got to have that a champion must have a nutritionist or someone that can you know cook his meals for him and also a strength coach To work hand-in-hand -hand with the trainer on the box as well See the Looping right hand from Miguel Gonzalez Not a big puncher. He's only got 24% of his wins by knockout eight knockouts and 31 wins for the fighter out of Santiago. 
I mentioned he wants to become the first male boxer from Chile to win a world title. And I mentioned the male fighter because Carolina Rodriguez, she won the female IBF bantamweight title and then vacated it, but she was Chile's first ever world champion. Yeah, you see Gonzalez not really using his jab. His attack is the body. He likes to break guys down to the body and then shoot shots up to the head. So expect a lot of body punching from both guys in this fight. Nice body shot right there from Nakahas. Nakahas is basically saying, okay, you want to go to my body? Well, I'm going to go back down. I'm going to go down to your body. We already saw that Mariaga finished the fight with a body shot at the start of this broadcast. And we see a push there from Jerwin Ancajas as round number one comes to an end. Okay. Comes from a long lineage of boxers and a boxing family. So it just runs in their blood. And together, they've gotten this far and they want to keep going further and further. For now, it's Jerwin Ancajas in the red trunks trim in white, taking on Miguel Gonzalez from Santiago, Chile. You mentioned the percentage of his landed shots that are body shots. He's actually a very good boxer from the outside, but he just loves to dig to the body and, and get into a war of attrition. And that's a dangerous place to be in against a fighter like Jerwin Ancajas. Yeah, that's a place where he needs to be because Jerwin Ancajas better, has better legs, better boxing ability. So he wants to be up in this kitchen. He wants to be digging down to the body and making it rough for Encajas and not allowing him to use that southpaw angles. Those southpaw angles. You see Encajas able to establish that jab from the outside. Yeah, when you fight against a southpaw, Bernardo, you know, one, one way to beat a southpaw is to be on top of him. You know, take those angles away, push him backwards. And if Gonzalez can push him backwards, and make make Ancajas uncomfortable, well, that's what increases, you know, his opportunity to, to win this fight. His name is El Aguja, which means the needle. So he's got to thread the needle here against Jerwin Ancajas. Get inside, use the jab, work the body, but get out of harm's way because Ancajas is a dangerous finisher. Right on the belt line was that right hand from Gonzalez. Ancajas can be hot and cold. In his last fight against Ruichi Funai, he looked spectacular. Yes, he did. And before that, you were not at all happy with his previous performance, a draw against Alejandro Santiago in his sixth title defense. No, I wasn't. I wasn't too happy. But his last, his last showing, he, you know, he showed a lot of improvement. He looked strong. He was quick. You know, he placed his shots very well, kind of like what he's doing right now. Placed his shots very well to the body. He got the knockout. He's finding openings in Gonzalez and creating them and taking advantage of them as Gonzalez landed a nice right hook to the solar plexus. Got those earmuffs on, does the Chilean fighter. You see those angles create that opportunity for the right hook to the body from Jerwin Ancajas, the yeah. southpaw. Yeah, that's a nice little wrinkle right there from Ancajas. Oh. Beautiful shots right there. Look at going down to the body. And as, you, as your man leans a little bit forward, in the pocket, what does Cajas do? Lift him up with the uppercut. There's taking what the opponent gives you and there's creating openings and opportunities. And that was the case for Jerwin Cajas here as we close out round two of a scheduled 10 rounder with the world title. Tensions all on you and you have to deliver at home. Deliver, that's what these two guys are trying to catch. A liver shot, <laughs> both. Jerwin Ancajas and Miguel Gonzalez. A lot at stake for Gonzalez in his first world title opportunity. And for Ancajas, he needs to keep proving that he is an elite fighter at 115 pounds because there are a lot of big names out there for him, be it Estrada, Sorung Visay, Donnie Nietes, his fellow Filipino, Kazuto Ayoka, Khalid Jafai, Chocolatito Gonzalez. A lot of talent, a lot of good fights to be made if he continues to win. Yeah, I'm seeing some maturity from Encajas. You know, he's really standing his ground, really sit down on his punches oh, now. Out. You know, that can be contribute to, you know, his strength and conditioning. You know, and he's looking like he's getting a lot more comfortable inside the pocket. You know, he's got a nice high guard, digging down to the body. He's not running around. You know, he's just walking in the ring, using his jab. Oh, and, he, wow. 
has his opponent in trouble here as Miguel Gonzalez is able to stay on his feet. But Ancaja smelled blood and goes for the body shots. A little low there with that left hook, but Ancaja's is dangerous. But look how short the shots are. Yeah. You know, from Ancaja's. They're nice short play shots. They're not wide. You know, so you know he's been working on this in the gym. He looks good tonight. And the other thing is, Miguel Gonzalez is making him work for it. This fighter came in here with a desire to make history for his home country. He's fighting against Ancajas with a lot of heart, but those body shots are gotta wear him down. You die by the sword, you live by the sword, you die by the die sword. By the sword. Yep. We see Gonzalez taking a lot of punishment to the body from Jerwin Ancajas, who goes downstairs once again. Nice Gonzalez. right hand there from Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez had no choice but to get inside the kitchen of and Cajas because and Cajas is just too athletic for him, too much ability. Big NBA fan, his sons are named after Kyrie Irving and Kyle Korver. And his daughter is just less than a year old, JC Kiera. So that's his inspiration. He keeps them back home in survival camp, but the last two fights he's been going to the naval base to do his work and you can tell the difference in the maturity level that yeah. you've mentioned and, and his improvement in boxing. My man trying to knock, he trying to knock, he trying to knock out Gonzalez. That's exactly what Encajas is trying to do. He's sitting down, he's right in front, you know, and and and, and Cajas is, the way he, the way he normally fights, he's a counter puncher. That's what he likes to do. He's a counter puncher, bro. Now he wants to be first. He wants to respond. And he's trying to hit hard tonight. He's trying to knock out Gonzalez. Good work from the champion, Jerwin Ancajas here in round number three with scheduled 12 rounder. Ricardo Osuna alongside Timothy Bradley, the champion. Jerwin Ancajas taking on Miguel Gonzalez in Puebla, Mexico. Ancajas now on the hunt. You mentioned it the way he closed out the previous round and now how he comes out for round four he's found his distance he's yeah. found his openings on gonzalez and he's taking advantage no he just really asserted himself that's what i like about him you know he's really asserting himself he's not just looking for just for counter shots you know he's trying to lead and he's trying to be defensive at the same time and then lead again tim bradley being effusive with his praise of jerwin on cajas let's get this on tape <laughs> Fans in Mexico, though, expecting a lot more. And they're letting both fighters know here in round four. It's been an entertaining fight so far. And Cajas has a nice jab. When he uses it, it's definitely effective for him. Setting up the backhand right there. And every now and then, you see Gonzalez. He'll, he'll jump in there. He'll leave himself wide open. And Cajas will take advantage of it. Cajas lands five of 25 jabs per round. There you see that leaping punch reminds us of Teofimo Lopez. Yeah, it was a leap. <laughs> it was a leaping punch, but typically, and Cajas would get hit with the shot like that. But he did this time. He held that phone. Going back to the jab numbers, junior featherweight average is two landed of 16 thrown. So, and Cajas is usually way above those numbers. He's keeping to that trend tonight. Likes to use that jab to set up everything, especially those body shots that he's so good at. Nice counter right there from Makahas. He saw the punch coming. You have to see the punch. If you want to avoid it, you got to look at it. You got to see it. Yeah, that's something what you've been mentioning about on Cajas is what you want to see out of a fighter is development. And yes. As the level of competition improves, you want to make sure that, that you're getting better. And after that lull he had, and, and now when we see him, and he started camp June 1st for this particular fight, which was supposed to be uh, November 2nd, you see the fact that he's a different fighter. Yes, he definitely looks like a different fighter. He's 27, he's right in the midst of his prime right now, Bernardo. Right in the midst of his prime. And, and, you know, at each fight you have, you have to continue to get better and better and better. You know, it doesn't stop. You know, you have to master your craft. And I believe that Akahas is finally 
in that position, probably at that point in his career right now, where he's starting to master his craft and believe in himself and his ability. He had that lull in his career, but now it seems to be paying off, getting that ring in the Philippines leading up to this fight. And Miguel Gonzalez, well, he sparred Juan Pablo Mesa and Gonzalo Funelida in Chile. And then he went to Puerto Rico and he sparred prospect Javier Cintron. So he got really good work, especially at the tail end of his training camp, knowing that he had to step it up for this world title opportunity. When in doubt, stick out the jab. That's exactly what uh, Jerwanaka did. That's exactly what you have to do, you know, especially dead, dead spots. You know, the young fighters out there that's just, you know, sitting there posing in front of each other. Get your jab working. You know, if you get your jab working, it's going to set up things for you. Nice counter right there from Gonzalez, who I, I was watching some of his fights in Chile, and the Chilean commentators were saying he's so good when he boxes, but he loves to be on the inside. And right now, you see his effectiveness fighting from the outside. But the fans not digging it. Nice shot to the body there. The solar plexus from Miguel Gonzalez who tries to find an angle and gets caught with a short left hook from Jerwin Ancajas. A little low with the left hook from Gonzalez. Hit the leg of Jerwin Ancajas. Quick three punch combination. Good defense from Miguel Gonzalez. See the total punches thrown so far, and Ancaja is just a lot more active, a lot more effective, and 3% more accurate so far through the first four rounds of this scheduled 12 round fight. Almost a clash of heads right there. Both guys exchanging. You know, with the Southpaw and the Orthodox fighters. You know, the, both their power shots lined up on the same side, so there could be head clashes and their feet will be to get tangled up every now and then. So their lead feet, their lead foot, I should say. We're talking about the power punches. Ancaja is landing at a 50% clip with 76 of 153 landing. Not bad for Gonzalez. He's landed 34 of his 92. It's just Ancaja's more active, more accurate, and I would say more powerful. Yeah, he's more powerful, Bernardo. He's kind of seem seemingly taking this round off right now. You know, he threw some big shots early. He landed, and it really didn't have a whoa, it didn't have a whole lot of effect like he wanted it to. So he's kind of taking this round off. Oh, nice right hand there from Jerwin Ancajas to close out this fifth round. We're going to schedule 12. And Kaz is doing right now. He's being the bully. Normally, he likes to fight off the back foot. He's actually pressing the action, ladies and gentlemen. He's actually looking for the knockout. This is a different Ancajas, Jerwin Ancajas. He took that round off. You mentioned it. Oh, headbutt warning there from Wayne Hedgepeth, the third man in the ring. But yeah, I mean, he wants to put on a show. He wants to prove to the other guys at 115 pounds that he is a force to be reckoned with. And boy, there's a lot of talent at that junior bantamweight division. You see that body shot once again from Derwin Ancajas. You could hear it. And that's really wearing down Miguel Gonzalez. Yes, it is. But you know, it's just it's just not a body shot to just thrown. It's a it's a it's a perfectly placed body shot. Like he sees the opening and he's attacking it. And he's digging, he's punching through the ribs of oh. his opponent. Nice uppercut, and his opponent is hurt. And here comes Jerwin Agajas trying to finish Miguel Gonzalez here in a round six of this world championship fight. Gonzalez holding on for dear life. And down he goes, but it's not a knockdown. Very smart from Gonzalez. Very, very smart from Gonzalez. Ooh, Jerwin Ancajas swings and misses, but Gonzalez is not well. His legs are wobbly, and the left of the shot. It would have been better for him to go down, because if not, Wayne Hedgepeth had no choice but to stop this fight. That's right. You know, sometimes when you hurt fighters, we just tend to go to, to the danger. You know, sometimes you got to be in there thinking. 
take the knee, recover, allow yourself another chance, a fighting chance to come back and turn the tide. We talk about the lack of experience in big fights, and that yeah. may have come back to haunt Miguel Gonzalez. When he was hurt, if he goes down by those shots, that's fine. Or even takes a knee. Take the knee. But instead, he gets pummeled. I've been in fights where, where I knew I was hurt, and I knew if I got hit with one more big shot, that I need to take that knee before that shot happens. That would have been a perfect time right there for Gonzalez to take the knee. He just allowed Ancajas to continue to tee off without throwing a single punch. This was smart. He took Ancajas down with them. Wayne Hedgebeth said it's not a knockdown. Right. But then what happened after that, Tim, was lack of experience. Definitely lack of experience, Bernardo. But you see Ancajas just letting his hands go just waiting for the referee to step in and do his job to protect him by those shots that's fine or even takes a knee, Take the knee. but instead he gets pummeled i've been in fights where where i knew i was hurt and i knew if i got hit with one more big shot that i need to take that knee before that shot happens that would have been a perfect time right there for gonzalez to take the knee he just allowed Ancajas to continue to tee off without throwing a single punch. This was smart. He took Ancajas down with them. Wayne Hedgebeth said it's not a knockdown. Right. But then what happened after that, Tim, was lack of experience. Definitely lack of experience, Bernardo. But you see Ancajas just letting his hands go. 